technique that we're going to work with is paper towel to create texture with watercolor. For this particular one, you're going to use one color and you're going to do two paper towel waxes. Um, we'll do two of the same color, but I'll share with you how you can use paper towel to do texture. For this, I like to have my water and my paint, and what I'm going to use as my paper towel handy before I start. Um, and then I pick a color, and I usually use the exact same color for both, so I can see the different looks I can get. As always, I wipe off extra water on the paper towel before I start. And then I would go ahead and get some color um, and get it wet. And using whatever is your favorite brush, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill in this section with paint. I personally like to use a rounded brush. I personally like to make sure that it's pretty wet for one of the two. And then the other one I'll do a little bit more dry on, excuse me, the other one I'll do a little bit wet on dry to show you the difference that can happen with the paper towel. Um, I like to do the wet and wet because as you know, the colors should merge and when it dries, it should be the same consistency. And then as a reminder, remember when it dries, it will dry slightly lighter. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get water on my brush. I'm going to dab some of the excess out, but I need it wet to be able to pick up some paint. And now I'll go back and again, using the dark purple, I will go ahead and paint it in. I prefer the rounded brush. I prefer the skinny tip when I start so I can define my edges on the box. I like to change the direction of my paper, but you do whatever you need to. And I kind of like to outline it so then when I smooth my paint out, it can be done uh, within that section. Remember, every time you stop and start with the brush, when it's dry paper and wet paint on top will show up. So I like to use a bigger brush that will allow me to go strictly across the page. All right, for this one, you're going to do paper towel. I'm asking you to create two different textures. So for the first one, I'm going to take some paper towel and I'm simply going to scrunch it up and I'm going to put it on there on top of the paint that's wet. And I'm going to let it go ahead and stick. And for the other one, I take some paper towel and I just scrunch it up and I'm literally going to lift off some of the paint as I do this. Sometimes you take off too much, so you can go ahead if you want and get a little paint back on the paper towel and fill some in. And so the paper towel becomes the painting tool. We'll come back to this one in a second. And what I like to do is take that off. And again, it took off a little bit too much. And I can go back in with this other paper towel and add some detail. So I really want to see the different things you can do with the paper towel. I could have done that more linear and only put the towel in certain sections, but that's what you can do with the paper towel. All right, something similar you'll do with the saran wrap. Saran wrap is that plastic wrap we use at home. I could use the same color, but for the sake of this demo, I'm going to go ahead and pick a different color. I'm just going to pick a color I haven't used, and so I'm going to go ahead and do orange. And again, I want one that is very wet, so I'm going to start with a wet square on the paper. And then I'm going to go ahead and get some paint. And I'm going to go ahead and put it in. Now, as you can see, wet and wet, it spread, spreads all over. I let it spread. I define my edges. Our goal is to stay neatly within the box as best you can. If this is an exercise, it is practice. So if it's not perfect, you'll get there. Watercolor is deceiving. It looks easier than you thought because we've all done watercolor as a kid. But to make it look really good, it does take a little practice and a little getting used to. All right, the other one I'm going to do the same. I'm going to go ahead and paint. This time I'm not painting the background first. I'm going to do wet paint on top of dry paper. Again, I'm going to paint the border first. And I'm going to do both of these at the same time. The saran wrap and the paper towel are best done when you have very wet paint. And so if it's just one or two little spots, you would have to practice with that to see how to get that to work. But when it's got a lot of water, that technique works best. Okay, so saran wrap is what you wrap food up in at home. You should have a piece or two. I took a piece and wrapped it in half. And then this I'm going to just squish up and I'm going to lay some of it down on top of this. I'm going to let it sit there and when it dries, I can pull it off 
And what you should find is in some areas it's cooled and so it got darker, and in some areas it'll be lighter. And then the other one I do the same thing like I did with the paper towel. Um, I'm going to go ahead and scrunch it up and just set it on the wet paper. And this one I can pick up. You'll see where it pools, where it gathered in some of the creases, and where it totally pulled if it went all the way down. And again, I like to just play with what kind of textures can you create. I'm going to leave that on there. If I try and take that off right now, it might be too wet. We're going to move on to the salt and the rubbing alcohol, and we'll come back and take that off on the end. All right, so the salt and rubbing alcohol are two additions that you can add to the paint to get interesting things to happen. Again, for each one, I would paint the three sections before I would do anything with the salt or the rubbing alcohol. Again, I'm going to go ahead and I want these to be fairly wet. And I guess as you play, because this is really just playing, we can also play around with what happens if it's less water, how much does the salt affect it? We're going to be combining a little bit of science here. What happens when the salt the makeup of the salt hits the water. Think in your head what you think might happen, and let's see if we can come up with the results before we do it. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just fill these. I'm not so much worried about these being perfectly even, because salt is really going to mess with the um, makeup of this paint. We have two different types of salt we'll be using. One is kosher salt, where the crystals are much larger. The other is table salt. And then I would like you to experiment with more salt, less salt. You can decide which is going to be which. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to begin with the kosher salt. I'm going to start at the top. It's extremely wet. And I'm going to go ahead and lay in some of this salt. Um, it works faster if it's wetter. And then I'm going to put in just a few crystals on the kosher salt where this has more. And then finally, I'm going to use a little table salt and I'm going to go ahead and put that in the last box. I'm going to sprinkle, table salt is just what you have at home in here, and I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle some on there as well. Those, we won't see the result until it's dry and we clean off the salt, but you should be able to begin to see where it's pushing the color away as the salt absorbs the water around it. Now, the salt one is messy, so be careful. Be careful where you put it so it doesn't get into other areas and affect the colors of those. The final one is rubbing alcohol. That's uh, isopropyl alcohol that many of you might have in your homes, in your uh, bathrooms. It's used to clean our ears and do other things, but it works wonderful with watercolor paint as well. So I'm going to go ahead and again, I'll just pick a color I haven't used. Um, again, this one, you want to play with how much water matters, how much does it affect what the alcohol is going to do. Again, I would go ahead and I would put this down, um, and I'm going to work fast as I paint these squares, because I want to work with this while the paint is still wet. You might want to play with getting one of the sections wet before you add the color. The wetter it is, you'll see, it makes a difference on how the alcohol affects, reacts the square. I'm going to go ahead and put more color in there, but I wanted to get it wet first. This does not work if your paint is dry, so you have to work while you still see some moisture on there. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint one more square. All right, for the rubbing alcohol, I will be giving you, or I suggest you use for at least one of them, the eyedropper tool like we used when we did the shading cream prints some kind of tool. And then I would suggest you also use a paintbrush, a stiffer paintbrush. All right, so the rubbing alcohol will be in small containers. You will go ahead and you'll take some with the eyedropper tool and then just gently drop some alcohol down. And as you'll see, it too is repelling. This one was wetter, so let's see what happens when I put the drops in there. And then finally, I might also play around with what happens if you put a brush in there and splatter with the brush. Because maybe I don't want big circles, but other circles. Depending upon how much water there is, down as you do your splatters will make a difference as you work through it. And of course, you could go back if you felt the need to. 
and you could splatter in other sections because maybe you want a combo of big and small.